All right, this is the final book support for On the Beach in our survival literature class. It's chapter nine. I like to think of chapter nine as the official winding down chapter. Seven and eight did have a nice slower feel to them, but nine is actually a chapter that feels as though it drags a little bit, and that's deliberately through the writing that Neville Shute chooses to use. He's all of a sudden writing extraordinarily light. We're getting nice, clear, almost concise, almost short sentences. Like, we don't want to insult them too much. Neville Shute is a very smart man. But the sentences all of a sudden become just very, very precise. And in a way, this is, of course, reflecting the way that these people have behaved and carried themselves throughout the entire movie, or rather book. You know, we're going to die calmly, peacefully, and with dignity. And so we're going to have nice, calm, peaceful, and dignified writing about that. All right. So we begin by finding out that Peter's being discharged. It's not an insult. It's not a slap in the face. It's just, we don't need an enemy anymore. And he says, you know, he's happy. He'd rather go home and spend his time with Mary and the baby, even though it's, it's like roughly a week is what he has left to spend that time with. Um, Dwight is there. And Dwight's final commanding order to Peter is go, go home immediately. Go spend this time with Mary as much as you possibly can. Um, people are already sick. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the meeting, the Admiral is, is talking to them, and he's halfway through a sentence when he says, excuse me, and he runs out of the room and he comes back. They notice the secretary's not there, and, and they're like, he's, he's sick. Um, Mary is still slightly in denial. She says, you know, oh, don't spend too much time. You'll bring back the infection. Okay, Mary. Um, and, and Peter, being a very loving, wonderful husband, just says, yes, of course. Right? I will be careful, you know, I won't stay for lunch, you know. Okay, so Peter is there, and the Admiral's there, and Dwight is there, and uh, Peter asks, you know, like, what, what are you planning to do to Dwight? And Dwight says, well, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the boat out with the crew to the straits, and we're going to sink the boat. And Peter goes, oh, okay, do you want me to follow in a tug, and I'll bring back the crew? And Dwight says, that's not really not necessary. And they kind of stand there in this awkward silence for 10 minutes when, you know, like, just processing the idea of, okay, all right, this is, this is how you're choosing to end your life, you know, like, and, and it is kind of relevant to the movie, but at the same time, remember, the movie does stray. The movie said that they're on their way back to America. No, they're not. They're just taking it out, and they're going to sink it deliberately, and all the men are fine with it. All, all the men are in complete agreement with this. Um, we then jump to John Osborne. John Osborne is visiting his mom, and he's just saying, like, you know, how are you doing? And she's very ill, of course. She's older, so it did affect older people faster than it did affect younger people, which is how most illnesses work. Uh, so he, he comes in, and he sees how she is, and of course, you know, a typical, like, lovely little old lady, she's more worried about her dog, Ming, and she's like, oh, you know, can you get some milk for Ming? I think Ming deserves some milk. And he goes, all right, yeah, I'll go out and I'll go look for some milk, and he... He comes back and the mom has, has, you know, chosen to end her life and she's left a note just saying like, you know, I don't, I don't want to ruin your last days if I have to, you know, you have to come here and, and deal with me and help me and, and, and nurse me to me, you know, like I'd rather die with, with some modicum of dignity, I love you, and then P.S. please do what you think is best for Ming, which is just so sweet. Um, and so John Osborne, you know, he, he, he not viciously, of course, he just puts a little of the uh, Nembutal into some milk and he gives it to Ming and he waits for Ming to, to pass away and he takes the dog and he lays it next to his mother. Um, and it's heartbreaking. And it's heartbreaking in, in two ways. One, it's, it's such a lovely, tender scene of such stark, horrible reality, but it's beautifully written. I mean, if you go and you examine the literature, it's light and it's lovely and it's soft. And I think that's what Neville Shute is really playing with. He wants you to see this beautiful light, evocative literature, talking about this very stark, upsetting scene. So it's, it's, it's quite a fun little scene for you. Um, so Mary and Peter are, are, you know, in their house and um, Peter is sick and Mary is sick and the baby is sick. Mary is, um, she's weirdly at least grateful that they all are sick at the same time. So uh, I'm gonna challenge those of us who really do believe that she's in denial with, do, do we think that she's in denial? If she knows that they're all sick at the same time and she's happy about that, I'm gonna challenge you as to your thoughts on whether she's truly in denial. Um, and then this is where the narration starts to float about. We start with Peter. And the narration goes with Peter while he goes into the town to look for a garden bench. 
and then we meet John. And John is there and he talks to Peter and then the narration floats to John's uncle, Mr. Frode. And I thought that was an interesting little trick by Neville Shute to do that in a way. He's showing us how the pathogen spread. It started with Peter, it flowed into John, it flowed into Mr. Frode. So we have this idea of like a floating narration following around the floating infection. And it's just a, a nice like tie between um, John we pick up with his own right after meeting with Frode. We go back with John to the um, to the garage where he keeps his car, and the car is beautiful. It's it's in great shape, as you guys know. It came through the Grand Prix as the winner, and it came through without a scratch because he's one of the three people who actually finished the race. Um, and he he gets the the car in working order. He does a little bit of work on it. He sits down behind the wheel of the car and he swallows the two pills. And it's important to note, he swallows the two pills with an effort. And I, I like to think that that's Neville Shute showing us how like even the scientist, even the man who spent the majority of the book telling us about how everyone's gonna die and we have to be okay with it and we have to live with it and we have to, you know, oh, the rabbits will be running and the dogs will be barking and the Angus cattle will be Angusing. And we, we, we have to be okay with it. it's just the end of us. Even he swallowing those pills has to force himself to accept it. And it's, it's really nice to see that Neville shoot finally at the very end lets us see John Osborne as 100% a human being. So in the book, the car is simply a coffin in a way. And that's great because it ties to Mora, who also uses her car as a coffin. Um, Mora is with her mother and father who are very ill. And of course the dad's thoughts are on the Angus beef and he's like, you know, open all the gates, they have to be able to get to the hay, which is, is just lovely and I really, I really do think it shows like people who, who do raise cattle, they do care for them, uh, especially those who, who raise them correctly. So, you know, organic meat. Um, but he's, um, you know, they're, they're both dying and I think they're both completely aware, like, you know, Mora, go, go spend your last few minutes with Dwight, go, go say goodbye to him. and. Um, she leaves the house knowing full well that she's not going to return, knowing full well that there's nothing to return to anyway. She gets into her car and she drives out to meet with Dwight. And they have this very lovely, almost, not almost, completely heartbreaking goodbye in which she says, can I come with you? And he says, no. And it was at that moment in the book, I literally heard crap. Her heart just broke. And, and she holds it together magnificently in only the way a British woman could. And, um, you know, he kisses her and she accepts the kiss and they talk and then he goes to kiss her again and she denies it. And I think to myself, Maura, I love you. I just, I love you for the scene. It's so beautiful and it's so tender and it's so heartbreaking. And she has got such great poise and, and, and just, just dignity in the scene. She's not mad, she's not angry, she's just, she's ready. Um, and Dwight takes off and he goes off and we end the, the actual book with Mora getting into her car and driving out to the furthest point she can so that she can watch the submarine disappear underneath the water. She gets back into her car and she swallows the two pills with a brandy. And I just think that that's, that's a lovely way for her to go out. Um, she's sober, she's aware, she's battled her demons, she's come out stronger and she's finally able to say, I'm, I'm in control of this. All right, so here is, here's your, here's your last reading check. I'm gonna hopefully post it by, by this evening. It is, it is Wednesday. Um, and you guys should be all set. Okay, this has been a fun book. I hope this has helped you guys out. Bye bye. Transportative or, or trans transportive or is transportation. I teach English.